break it up a little bit. They, 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 they were very solid. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody knows Jamie Carr. Um, Not necessarily. <laughs> he's struggling with it, aren't you? <laughs> 15 years old. He's Next to Jamie is Valentina Skelton Marie Skelton Alonzo. And then Logan. This is Red Logan Skelton. And then the designer of the uh, museum is Steve Fellman. That's right, and, and I do it very well, incidentally. Jimmy Carr. Yes. I, uh, I owe it to Red because if it weren't for him, I probably wouldn't have remained in show business. I owe my uh, career to Mr. Skelton. He, uh, he saved me uh, during uh, trying times in my life, and, uh, which I will talk about tonight at the, uh, at the event. So uh, stay tuned. And then now we're open for the press. Uh, questions you want to ask? And then after we have a, a brief interaction, we will allow you to take some in individually and interview. Any questions? Mr. just uh, your thoughts on, as you went through here, what, what memories flew back for you as you walked through here and saw all of the things your cousin was associated with, all the characters? And all, um, well, there are, there are so many memories. There are more memories than I can even recall. But. Uh, it was more than memories. It was just a feel-good feeling. And Mr. Feldman really did a nice job. And I, I just felt so good about it. I felt more than memories. I felt so good about being able to bring these things to be shown to the public and enjoyed by many people, not just kept at home and kept uh, out of sight, but to be enjoyed and shared by many. And so this was the thing that really means a lot to me. Uh, my memories I'll always have of Fred, but this is even bigger than that. I want to introduce now Shirley Ray. Shirley is the executive director of the museum, and she has responsibility for the collection. And with how many costumes are you showing here? Right now we have six characters on this floor. And how many more? We'll, do, we'll be adding one more. Junior to meet little kid, because they see him later on. <laughs> OK, another question. Well, the individual interviews. Yeah. Are <laughs> so whoever wants. We don't want to show our hands. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and ask a question to the, uh, the Skelton family. Your first impressions when you walked into this place. Are you talking me or? Well, I think he's asking. Yeah, well, Valentina is Red's daughter, and she should be giving the first answer because I think she has known her dad longer than even I've known. Him. Yeah, it, it was. I was impressed with the old TVs. I mean, that that I enjoyed that seeing the old black and whites and going over to the uh, what is that? Cloud the dressing. The dressing. Okay. Yeah, it just brought me back. I, I, I could see my dad when he was sitting and, and make, putting on makeup before he go you know on stage and things. And you know, it's got a really great feeling in here. And I 
it'll, it'll be a fun place for people to see and, and learn about him. I was going to ask if you if you spent that much time with your father. Did I spend that much time with yeah, him? Yeah, being in show business. What was it? Well, like? he was gone a lot, yeah. you know, and then you know the, the early years, pretty much a lot of being with him. Um, later years, not as much. Uh, things just went differently. Um, talking on the phone, uh, getting together. I know during the time that Jamie was was around, we, there was some traveling done, and we went different. The family went different places, and uh, uh, then I was, you know, we, we had more time together, but, yeah. Other questions? I'd like to ask a question for uh, Jamie Farr. If uh, you consider yourself kind of the next generation of Red Skelton, because, again, you're responsible for one of the greatest characters in television history, following one of the greatest character actors in history. I had nothing to do with it. I assure you. <laughs> uh, no, I, what I learned from Red was uh, the professionalism and the, uh, uh, the, the way he treated his audience. Uh, this gentleman was sitting over here, Lenny, and I were talking earlier about the difference between the comedians of today and the comedy actors as opposed to the ones of, of yesterday, where they had such great respect for the audience. Uh, today, everything has a, an edge to it, a sarcasm, a, a, you have to put somebody down. It's uh, like everybody's now doing uh, Fat Jack Leonard and uh, Don Rickles kind of things with people instead of uh, having their own brand of humor. And uh, Red was a stickler for that. Uh, he, uh, although many of you probably know this, and, and, and Valentina and I were laughing about this earlier, because Red, when he had his show at CBS, he did have what was called the Dirty Hour. It was a rehearsal that they purposely did that as, as a joke. And every executive at, uh, at the studio would turn on the TV. They had to watch it. And everybody was laughing. And he'd throw lines in that he was not going to use on the air. And then when he came on the air, and it was live television, he'd get right to that point. He'd look at the performer next to him as if he was going to say that line. And of course, they'd break up. And, and you wouldn't know. The audience wouldn't know. But you knew something was, was, was amiss there. Yeah. But Red was a, he, he was a kind man. He was a, a man who, who uh, he, he had his, his hand on the pulse of the audience. And he knew how far he could go with them. Uh, that, that's what I, I learned from the respect for the people you're performing for. May I ask one follow-up, and that is, how much of what Red Skelton did came out in Max Klinger? Uh, I don't think uh, you know, a lot of that. I, ne I never tried to emulate Red. I mean, that's certainly, I wouldn't do, that would be doing an impersonation of him. But my work ethic was, was Red Skelton. You know, that's, that's, the thing, that's the most important thing that you should learn. You shouldn't try to be somebody that you're not. And when I worked with him, I never tried to upstage Red at all. I was there to make it better, make the show better for him. So if he'd break up, if he'd do something, I'd go along with him, knowing, though, that we had to get back to the script, which was very important because it was live television, and if you didn't do the story in the time limit you had, you're off the air. <laughs> it's before tape and, and uh, film. To the Skelton family, um, what did Vincent mean to Red? You, you would like me to answer that question? Yeah. Uh, whoever, whoever wants to. Well, it, uh, it meant a lot to him because um, it made him appreciate everything from childhood on up. He, re he realized how important it was for the train to pass by and to throw coal uh, off the train to keep their home warm or a sandwich for his mother from a man that found her uh, to be a rather charming lady, you know, and things like this. He told stories of uh, things of this nature. and. And Red had a very uh, had a lot of poignant memories of Vincennes, but on the other hand, he started working at the age of uh, I believe it was uh, eight, ten years old, and so by that time he was concentrating on sending money home, how little or much it might have been to his parents. So uh, it meant a lot to him, but he also also knew that he wanted to expand and show business and, and go the next take the next steps uh, in his hopefully a big career. How about your favorite character? Well, go right down the line. They, you know, you like Clem Cadiddle Hopper better than. I, I, I personally, uh, I, I follow the popular route of liking Freddie the Freeloader because 
he simply passed on uh, wonderful um, ideas to people. It wasn't just being a bum, but he had good little lessons to be learned. He, he was a good teacher for people, and I like that. I like the lessons that he had uh, to follow, and uh, I like George Appleby, the hen-take husband. I mean, I absolutely <laughs> went, into, went into hysterics over that because he was so weak and everything. The woman was such a, you know, such a hen-take. And we women, you know, we really have to watch that, so I thought it was very funny. I liked it. Those, that's probably my favorites, yes. I think for me, I'm looking around, it's, uh, I think Junior, the mean little kid, uh, he would have been one that, because of a child, thinking of my dad being a child, you know, and what he was seeing in life at that time, and, and then making it into a character. I think that that was fun. I remember it on radio, and you could hear it, you know, they would, the radio shows would have it, and, and you'd hear the voice, and, and, and the whole, him getting in trouble all the time, and I thought a lot of a lot of us get in trouble, so it's kind of more. And I think Freddie would have been one too, the, the heartfelt, you know, for, for Freddie. Yeah, me little kid, me little kid on radio is definitely it. Uh, and of course, Freddie, yeah, the Red loved uh, Panama. He loved uh, Marcel Marceau, and uh, he he just was an expert at it. Uh, Any time he'd do something with a needle and a thread, you really believed everything he did. Yeah, if he picked up an imaginary suitcase. The weight was in the right place. He, he had that suitcase in his hand, even though it wasn't there. The other one I liked, because it was so silly, was Dead Eye. Because he'd always get so I'm going to, when I count three, I'm going to shoot. All right, you ready? One, two, three. He's a little slow, isn't he? You know, those kind of things. Very good, thank you. I think Yosemite Sam was, <laughs> the cartoon was, he stole that from Red, not the Dead Eye. <laughs> Um, we didn't really choose because we have the space too. It's going to give us an opportunity to show more about his career in movies and radio. What you see here is primarily his television. Um, I think the choosing was more about trying to present the whole Red Skelton. It wasn't so much about the different facets of his career. Uh, I think where, where we were looking for balance was um, you know, showing the great talent he had, which was obvious, it was just a riot, but also the great heart he had. And we tried to make that come through. and. I think that provides resonance to all the things we were doing and gives a little bit of balance, you know, to you know, just the great humor that you see throughout. Other questions? Well, I, we got a question for you. What do you think of Red Skelton? You live here in Vincennes. Are you proud? Oh, my Lord. Yeah. Okay. I'm probably the oldest person in here. Uh, as as company, maybe. <laughs> An interesting thing, I'm a news director at a TV station in Terre Haute, right. and we came down for this. Uh, when we discussed the fact that I was going to come down and do a live shot and cover the thing, I'd say two, maybe three of the little reporters in there had never heard of it. Sure. They didn't know who Red Skelton was, or is. Yeah. So today on our newscast, we're going, I did a little pull some file footage and, and just kind of basically explain to some parts of our audience who read the book. Yeah, that's an interesting thing because uh, Esther Williams, who just passed away, who did a lot of movies, great movies with Red, very entertaining, funny, great music in it, got very little coverage of it, and James Gandolfini, who right. did The Sopranos, was all over the news in that. And there's a great number of people that don't remember the wonderful legends of our business. Yeah, yeah, the Red Skeletons and Esther Williams. It's a matter of timing, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. To some extent. Well, thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah. And the museum will introduce another generation now. Absolutely. Red <laughs> and I encourage them to, you know, make the trip uh, so they could uh, experience You know, we, we in comedy always said, funny is funny. It's always funny. If it's funny, it's funny. You can go back. This young man could go back and look at Laurel and Hardy carrying the piano up the steps and still laugh. You see Charlie Chaplin and you still laugh. You see Red Skelton's Guzzler's Gin and Beyond the Floor. There are certain things. I was talking about Avid Costello and who's on first. Funny is funny and it's always funny.
Yes. Well, everybody, if, you, if anybody knows Red, they know those two birds. <laughs> well, are we ready now to? Yes. Hey, if you all just choose any one of you first and ask them to step wherever you're going to interview them. And you want us out of here? Or? No, no, no. Like staying here with the museum in the background would be great. You can use the alcove.